Back in 1999, this would have been the most anticipated movie of all time. Star Wars was an international phenomenon that exploded from a single release back in 1977 to something that is now a huge part of people's lives. That principle still exists inside of today's society. However, you all know how this film was received by both fans and critics alike. What's most interesting about The Phantom Menace is that it took a while for these hateful opinions to manifest. When the movie was first released, most fans of the Star Wars franchise were head over heels for The Phantom Menace. Whether this was genuine or pure denial is difficult to pinpoint, however I think it's safe to say that we all have the same opinion on the movie these days compared to what we had back then in 1999. Now there is a character in this movie named Jar Jar Binks and well, he was quite the character. We all know how this goes, so yeah he's in the movie. I'm not going to talk anymore about him. He's probably the most discussed character in the history of film. So I'm just going to leave it at that. More? More did you speak? All of the characters in this movie are just bland and boring. This even extends to the Jedi in this movie. Liam Neeson is a fantastic actor, but his performance as Qui-Gon Jinn was just uninspiring. I understand that he is supposed to be a very stern and straightforward character, but you never particularly get any emotion from him, which is disappointing as he seems to be a very interesting character who perhaps has a bit of a more richer backstory, which we don't actually see unfold in The Phantom Menace, which I think is one of the movie's biggest mistakes. The same could be said about Ewan McGregor as young Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now to be fair, in the other prequels he got a lot better and I do mean a lot better to the point of greatness, however in this film he just came off as a bit tasteless which was a shame considering he was the character we were all most excited to see in this film. Now Jake Lloyd, I feel really bad for this guy. Now don't get me wrong, he is not good in this movie remotely, but this film just destroyed his film career and personal life. However, I felt his performance as Anakin in this movie was good enough for what it needed to be, but if you're trying to show us the most evil character in the galaxy as a young child, was this really the direction that was the best they could come up with? Also, I just don't buy the fact he built C-3PO. Don't buy it. So, picture this, you are lining up to see this movie, you are a huge fan of the original trilogy. You love those movies because of their subsequent themes of family and betrayal blended with some awesome action scenes. You sit down to watch The Phantom Menace, you are excited out of your mind and the first thing that pops up on the screen is trade negotiations. How disappointing indeed. So can we all discuss the true reason why this movie was made? The pod racing scene. Now again, don't get me wrong, this is a cool scene. It's a great concept actually, a concept I really like, the idea of this galactic racing going on inside this desert planet. However, the only reason this scene was implemented into the film was so they could make a couple of pod racing video games on the N64 that would sell like hotcakes. True story. I brought up that last point because I'd look at this movie in the grander scheme of things, and out of all the Star Wars movies, this is the one that stands out the most to me. The Phantom Menace, in all actuality, is pointless. The prequel trilogy should have started with Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, however George Lucas really wanted to show us young Darth Vader. That was probably a mistake. Now there are a couple of positives in this film. For one, that end fight scene is fantastic. It is choreographed to an absolutely insane degree, of course. However, you can't deny that it is brilliant to watch. Also, we had never seen two Jedi take on a Sith before, so it actually brought a new element to Star Wars fight scenes that would be revisited time and time again in the prequel trilogy, and I think that does say something about how great that scene was. Also, the song that plays during that fight scene, which is called Jewel of the Fates, has easily become one of the most popular and most well-known Star Wars theme songs out there. You can hear it in the background of this video. It's so iconic, it's so brilliant, and it fits the tone of that fight so well. I love this song, and I think, you know, John Williams, this is one of his best pieces he has ever written and ever composed. The main reason this fight is cool though is because of the Sith apprentice known as Darth Maul. He was a mysterious silent assassin of a Sith who was made unique by his never seen before double bladed lightsaber. He was so popular they brought him back from the Clone Wars animated show and then they brought him back again in the Rebels animated show. How he came back though, I still have no idea. That was the hook of this movie. It was very boring for a large portion, however the final act was very exciting and showed fans new things they had not been accustomed to before in a Star Wars movie, leaving them on a high note, thus making the movie seem better than it actually was. I don't hate this movie at all, I don't even think it's the worst Star Wars movie. We'll talk about that one next week. The Phantom Menace was just more of a phantom disappointment.